supposed to start with these operation programs first. Let's major both in shed. Let's do something a little more fun. How about combat training? of electrons in the wire. When the magnetic field sweeps down across the wire, electrons move in one direction. When the magnetic field sweeps up across the wire, the electrons move in the opposite direction. This movement of electrons in either direction constitutes an electric current flow. If we move the magnetic field more slowly across the wire, fewer electrons are affected in a given period of time, and the electric current flow is decreased. And when we stop moving the magnetic field, the electric current flow stops, and the electrons again move in all directions. If this wire is connected to a meter, we find there is no electric current flow. When the magnetic field is moved down, this meter shows current flow in one direction. If the magnetic field is moved up, the meter shows current flow in the opposite direction. We can change the amount of electric current flow in several ways. Move the magnet faster, more current flow. Use a stronger magnetic field, still more current flow. Now coil the wire so that several turns are in the path of the field. Again, the current flow is increased. Stop moving the magnet. Current flow stops.
Ancient pyramids were high frequency power stations. The pyramids of Giza are considered one of the greatest wonders of the world. Gerald Massey, who lived between 1828 up to 1907, was a poet and author of spiritualism. He's best known for his book, Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World. He soon died after the book was published, but it remains a staple today in academic circles. In a profound statement Massey made when he said, although he has been studying ancient Egypt for over 40 years, he felt his knowledge based on ancient Egypt was that of a child. We wonder where his knowledge base would have been if he lived during our times, advanced enough to put the pieces together perhaps? There's been a tremendous amount of theories regarding the pyramids. In the earliest phases, archaeologists believed pyramids were nothing but tombs for the pharaohs. In essence, they believed the larger than life a pharaoh was correlated to the size of the pyramid. Greek historian, the ancient Greek Herodotus, in the 5th century BC, who's been called the father of history, wrote that Cheops never used the Great Pyramid as a tomb, but was buried elsewhere in a subterranean region on an island surrounded by the waters of the Nile. Later theories morphed into something showing the power of Egypt and they were aligned with celestial markers to honor their gods. Many dedicated authors studied over large chunks of their lives and built compelling cases, but it just might be really simple. Due to theft and looting, we've been left with a shell and architectural clues. Suppressing the truth of the Great Pyramids of Giza leads back to the elite protecting their systems in order to stay filthy rich. What we're looking at when evaluating the Pyramids of Giza was a multiple purpose energy system. This was free energy affordable to all of the people. All homes enjoyed light and power, even the most rudimentary batteries stayed charged. We discovered a schematic machine on the Sumerian tablet of Shamash which shows a particular frequency embedded in stone. When researchers began to understand, the ancient people used some sound to move the objects. Recording of sound from near the Earth's core is in a video embedded in the link I'll leave before for you, entitled Amazing Sound from Earth Core. The Great Pyramids of Giza harness the very sound waves from the inner core of the Earth. Humans cannot hear these frequencies from the Earth, but sound waves are emanating from the Earth nevertheless. These pyramids, the pyramid cultures flourished because they took care of the basic needs of the people. This is exactly why these ancient empires last thousands upon thousands of years. The Great Pyramid is flat dab in the center of the Earth's landmass and also acts like a fulcrum. This design takes advantage of the sound waves pushed out of the air core into the shafts. Where the limestone dampens the low frequencies and only allows the higher frequencies, the highest of the frequencies, to emanate out of the pyramid. The pyramids were coated with gold, which conducted these high frequencies. This is why there was such a quest for gold from these ancient civilizations because it led to power, just not the kind most think. Based on the size of the Pyramid of Giza, a field of free energy was created around Egyptian cities. The ancient world, the word for battery was Jed, and any battery in this field was constantly charged. Jed, D-G-E-D. Anks in the field had increased power, and the darker the skin, the higher the frequency a person could conduct. Rods were used to direct this power in a field for the intended purpose. The Pyramid of Giza is essentially the world's largest PEPCO station. Due to its enormous size, massive amounts of high frequency could be gathered and generated. The field must have went out for hundreds of miles. The Pyramid of Giza was flooded with water because sound travels about four times as fast in water as it does in the air, which means the high frequency were moving with increased velocity by the time it hit crystals. Due to the particular covalescence of water's hydrogen bonding, electrons are not held by individual molecules but are easily distributed 
amongst water clusters giving rise to coherent regions capable of interacting with local electric and magnetic fields and electromagnetic radiation. So you can imagine living in a country that not only was responsible for the infrastructure and development of the nation, but provided free energy to all its people. This was a time when people actually worked together and did amazing things because of free energy. Any device which required power was automatically powered if it was in the field. The caveat is you would have to know the tune, the tune. The elements used to design the high frequency power stations were ferreted away after Napoleon's scientific expedition in the early 19th century. Soon after Napoleon's return, new patents for electronics began to emerge. After Napoleon's army left the pyramids unprotected, the ransacking began. But rest assured, the components of the high frequency generator had already been removed. Knowing the Pyramid of Giza is a high frequency generator allows us to reverse engineer the necessary components based on the architecture of all of the shafts, including the king and the queen's chamber, as they like to call it. Now, when we look at the king and queen's chambers, we see a housing for the missing components. We believe there were customized crystals housed in these chambers. When the high frequency spread through the water, then the crystal began to vibrate. A frequency so high, it was undetectable by human ears. So let's get a better understanding of crystal used for frequency. A crystal oscillator is an electronic oscillator circuit that uses the mechanical resonance of a vibrating crystal of has your electric material to create an electronic signal with a very precise frequency. This means the precise frequency was generated, instrument, tools, and weapons had to be configured to its precise frequency, allowing them to tune in and gain power. If you were an outsider, you, you needed power, you had to be cleared and trained about the precise frequency. Any invention in the ancient land need only tune in and massive amounts of free energy was available. So the Earth's inner core has an inner core of its own with crystals aligned in a different direction. Let's take a look at the architectural structure and you'll see how the Great Pyramid's design takes the energy from our rotating Earth inside the Earth's inner core are more crystals. Remember, we mentioned crystals were used in the King's and Queen's chamber. While the Earth's crystals created an even-present field of sound, an ever-present field of sound we just can't hear, but it surely can be harnessed, as demonstrated by many ancient pyramid cultures. This also explains why these ancient cultures lived in such harmony with the Earth, because she was more than the sustainer of life. The ancients knew the Earth has a power station, was a power station giving her children free energy. As a byproduct of the Earth's free spin, her crystals vibrated frequency, this, this frequency being sound waves. This explains the design of the unfinished chamber of the Pyramid of Giza, accepted by academia and perpetuated by the educational systems. The unfinished chamber is quite finished. We assure you, it was designed to capture and direct the sound waves through the pyramid. In its rawest form, the sound waves come bundled in low to the highest frequencies. Again, the water acts as a turbo boost, pushing the frequencies through four times faster than if they merely pass through the air. This allowed the king and the queen's crystals to vibrate and increase the propagating sound waves in the pyramid. The frequencies propagated towards the outside of the pyramid, where the low frequencies were filtered out and only the high frequency escaped the pyramid. The gold coating on the Great Pyramid of Giza allowed the pyramid structure to resonate only the high frequency. Now we understand why the ancient Egyptians decided to build the Great Pyramid at the exact center of the surface of the Earth's landmass. That must have been the best location for acoustic capture of free energy. If the Earth's core is a massive iron crystal core, at 1,500 wide, silently ringing free energy around the Earth, who needs fossil fuels? 
we are all being distracted and solutions are high in our, right in our face, we could replicate this basic design and transform every industry and change life for the better. At one time, the entire academic system perpetuated the Pyramid of Giza was a tomb for payoffs. We can only suspect after the Napoleon scientific theft of the inner workings of the pyramids, false notions were planted in academic circles. Even then, the elite knew not to share free energy with the people, let alone with an energy the elite could not profit off. The elite worked through secret societies that spanned the globe. There's a phrase that whoever wins the wars owns the history. As you can see, the Pyramid of Giza is more than just a spiritual symbol or a show of great power. It is a transformer of great power. This means all the other planets in our solar system, including our sun, emanate sound waves, a high frequency symphony waiting to get tapped like a college kid party. We need only to disconnect from our current path of being fearaholics and doomsday prophecy junkies. We are being distracted as a human race on unprecedented levels. The irony is answers are right in our face, yet we all need to do all we need to do is just focus on them. Technology has reached such a place in conjunction with the internet where we are all becoming aware. Dots are being connected much quicker now. Instead of focusing on doom and a rush to death, we need to embrace being alive. We need to focus our collective consciousness on improving our lives through free energy. The ancients left us blueprint embedded in stone. We need only use our current scientific knowledge based on reverse engineering the solutions. Understanding the earth is not only the sustainer of life, but a free energy power station should guide us in protecting her. No more needs for hydro fracturing oil or gas because man needs to rape the earth in order to collect these fossil fuels. It's time to wake up as a people and feel the vibrations. This is by uh, Gerald Massey's book Ancient Egypt, The Light of the World and uh, by Revelation Now. And I'll leave a link below for you for this so that you can see the video embedded in it as well. Rotating electrical machinery is a part of much military equipment. Whether it is a simple blower or a complicated electronic device in a missile, they all depend on the proper functioning of rotating electrical equipment. Two types of motors and generators are commonly in use. Alternating current or AC and direct current or DC motors and generators. This film will show the principles governing the operation of DC motors and generators. Basic to the understanding of DC motors and generators is the simple generation of an electromotive force, an EMF. Mechanical energy the moving of a wire or conductor across a magnetic field by hand in this instance produces electrical energy. The magnetic field is composed of lines of force. As the conductor cuts these lines, an electromotive force or EMF is generated in the conductor. 
moving the conductor down through the field makes the needle of a voltmeter deflect one way, which means the EMF has one direction. Moving the conductor up through the field produces the opposite deflection of the needle. The EMF has now changed direction. Moving the conductor back and forth with the field does not make the needle of the voltmeter deflect. There is no EMF because the conductor is not cutting the field. To illustrate the direction of current flow, the conventional symbols will be used. Current flowing in a conductor away from us is represented by a cross, toward us by a dot. However, moving a conductor in and out of the field in this straight reciprocal fashion is awkward and impractical. A simple generator of EMF can also be made by rotating a single turn coil within a stationary magnetic field of two magnets with opposite polarity. The loop now, in effect, becomes two conductors because both the top and bottom sections cut magnetic lines during rotation. Since they cut lines of force of opposite directions as they rotate, EMFs of opposite polarity will be generated in the conductors. In order to have current flow in this circuit, polarities of the two conductors must be opposite.